Hello and g'day. In today's video, I'm going to be making these lace card spools. Lace cards are handy if you've got lots of lace that's a mess like this. I made these cards nice and big and that's because I've got so much lace. Every time I look in my containers, it's extremely hard to see what I've got in my stash. So storing it this way takes up too much room. As always, I'm going to break my tutorial up into steps. First step, it's about the pattern. Second step, I'm going to make one of these lace cards in real time from start to finish. And the third step, I'll show you the difference it makes to my storage. The pattern. I have a freebie for my Facebook members. So you need to be a member of my Facebook group. Just pop on in and have a look and there'll be a post there to tell you all about how you get your freebie copy. The freebie will be this print here. So it'll be the lace front and back pattern and it will look like this. So that's this one here. For everybody else, you can pick up this set from my website. I'll have it as a download printable and I'll put the link below for you to pop on into my shop and you'll be able to pick up all of these printables and just print them out and follow the steps that I'm about to show you shortly. When I print out my pieces, the front and backs, all I've done is I've used everyday photocopy paper. In Australia, we use around about 89 to 90 GSM. This is A4 size. There is a printable available in the letter size eight and a half inches by 11 inches. I'll cut this out and I'll show you how quick and easy they are to make. To make them up, you need a copy of the printable, front and the back, and a just a thinnish piece of cardboard. I'm just using a cereal box. You can use a piece of cardboard that you've taken out of a photo frame when you buy it. You can use a biscuit box, anything at all that you've got. You don't want anything too heavy. It'll be a bit harder to cut out because we're going to sandwich this cardboard between these two pieces. What I like to do first is cut out my cardboard the same size as my top and uh, the same size as my front and back pieces. So I'm going to cut out my front and back pieces first. I'm going to do this in real time just to show you how quick and easy it is to do. I'm cutting just using my ruler and a craft knife. This is a Scotch craft knife. I love this knife. It's really easy to use. There's our front and back pieces. How easy was that? All right, they're the same size. And you just put one of these pieces on your cardboard. And cut that out the same size. You'll notice that I've got my background bigger than my card spool and that is because it's much easier to line the front up to the back and then it's easier to cut out so that you don't have any mismatches from the front to the back. If it's a bit shiny, I like to get a bit of sandpaper and just rough it up a bit. 
this is a sandpaper block. If you've got any of the paper stuck in your block, just get a paintbrush and dust that off. And I'll do the same to clean my table. Now I'm ready to glue that. I'm going to use this piece on my back for my back. Right, so then just go around the edge with your glue. I stay away from the actual edge edge of the cardboard and that way when I squish this down it's not going to seep out all over my mat. There is a right and wrong way to this fitting so just turn it around to the right way and it makes it a lot easier when you cut your cardboard piece to fit the front and back pattern pieces. And when I squash that down like that to flatten the glue because I'm using the Helma fabric glue in Australia. Your equivalent in USA is the Fabri-Tac. When I flatten that down, it's not going to squish out all over the sides because I haven't overused my glue. Turn it over. Around the edge again. Don't forget if you have a look at the pattern piece there, the front piece above me here, the spool edge line is not doesn't come right out to the edge of this paper or this cardboard. So it's okay to not take this right to the very edge because we're going to cut it back to that line. Same again, get it going the right way and just lay that down. Flatten out the glue in the middle. This is a silicon uh, bone folder. So the glue, if it did squish out, it's not going to stick to this bone folder. I can wipe it straight off. It's quite a handy little tool, this one. All right, so then I use my fingers to just make sure that it is flat, especially around this lined area. I would normally be making a few of these so I would by the time I just kept going and keep making some this would have time to dry. So to cut it out I'm just going to put my ruler straight down the side lines and cut that away. So I'm going to cut a square all the way around here and I'm all but cutting away that black line. It's a very thin line it's actually dark grey. Go all the way around. Do a couple of cuts if you need to. No point rushing. All right, then I'm going to just come back in here and cut these tiny little pieces. Cut them out. This way I get a nice clean corner in here. Then I'm going to put my ruler back on the inside cut line. And I'm going to put the point of my knife right in that corner and cut down and I'm going to stop before I get to this corner here. I'm going to turn it around, see how neat that corner cut is there. You can see it's very clean. I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to freehand cut, put the point of my knife back in that corner and virtually just push the knife down and look how clean that cut is when you do it that way. Same again, put my knife right in the corner there on the point, put my ruler up against the blade of the knife, pull it down, stop just before I get to that corner, turn it around, put my knife back in that corner, drag it down to meet the cut line 
and that should cut away quite easily if it doesn't you just need to touch it up a little bit come back in and there you have it so we've cut out our main shape then I'm just going to hand cut the the corners off you can use a punch if you've got one but I find it's near impossible to get a punch in these bottom lines so you'll see a tiny little line there to follow I just follow that line and round those corners move your card rather than your scissors and it'll just work for you move your card rather than your scissors to get this one here and this one here I actually turn it over and move your card turn it around back to this one and that's good to go you can distress ink the edges if you want to go to the trouble or you can leave it plain like that I've left this one plain if you've got a real lot of these to do you don't have to I've made all the patterns the same color because when you've got them in a display box you might like the idea of them all being the same color now there is an alternative you can make them out of scrapbook papers so I'll show you how to make those and just decorate them with your own bits and pieces now if you're like me and you've got a lot of scrapbook paper that I don't feel for me that this is suitable to put in a junk journal I may make a junk journal for someone else that likes these colors but my personal taste not so much the same with this one here okay so this piece here is quite light the paper is you know like I wouldn't even say it's 100 gsm I'd say it's around about 90 so it's not overly heavy it's white on one side what we could do is we could glue the two pieces together so your two white bits are there and you'll still get a front and a back and that would work out well if you still feel that is not stiff enough you can always do the same as we've done before glue that piece of cereal box or any light cardboard glue that in between and trace around it again and then cut the th the three pieces out together as one you can do that and that turns out quite nice so only sandwich it if you feel it's a bit light just reinforce it with a bit of your cardboard this scrapbook paper here is a bit heavier I used it here and all I've done is use two pieces it is double-sided and that one there just plays tricks on my brain and almost blinds me so I made sure that I picked one that's not so tricky on my eyes so say we went with this blue one that that's crazy on my eyes as well so I don't particularly like that one that one's a little bit better but still not <laughs> mad about it so what I do with this one is I'll cut it down the center so I'll work out six inches because you know it's a 12 by 12 so we need a, a six inch piece cut it down the center and because it's firm it is a good weight it's around about 120 mm, maybe 150 GSM so the two pieces together are nice and firm so I can definitely run with that 
I'm using the Helmer fabric glue again. If you like that side of the print, you can have one going one way and one going the other. I'm going to keep it the two blue dots and I'm just going to glue these two pieces together. They don't need a piece of cardboard to reinforce them at all. It doesn't have to be perfect because we haven't cut out our spool yet. Flatten that glue in the center. If you haven't got a scan and cut and you're using your scrapbook paper, just use your template and trace around that and hand cut that out. But what I normally do is I use my scan and cut electronic cutting machine. I cut my scrapbook cardstock into two six inch pieces, mirror them onto the mat and then cut them on the scan and cut. They turn out perfectly perfect every time. And I cut one, two, three, four, then I glue those together. They work out perfectly. They look like this. So there's no need to cut them out with a border around them or an edge because I don't worry about how they match up because the scan and cut is so accurate. Now the way I've done this one is I use the Dymo label maker and then I put a little bit of washi tape over the top. So I'll show you how to do that one now. So I've got a, one with a bit of color on it and just the black and white one. And it almost goes clear when, when I put it over the top of the label maker because this one here, it's going to print out in white. This is the modern one and I've also got the vintage Dymo label maker and it looks really cool. So if you've done something like that for, for your vintage ones, if you wanted to, and if you're, again, like me, into looks, I love things looking really good, even in my storage. So if you like that sort of thing, that looks great. And it all of a sudden takes this polka dot scrapbook paper that I didn't like before and wouldn't use now is something I like and it's changed it entirely. So let's just make this one here. I've got the word vintage lace. It's kept it from the last time I've done it. So I'm just going to print that out. And that's just going to print out in the white. You can get this in different colored papers. Now cut that little fellow off. Now I'll also give it a hit with a little bit of distress ink because it is paper, this one and just blend that in and just keep the center of it with a little bit of white on it it just adds a bit more interest and i'll peel the back off it because these are stickers the challenge here is to get it in the center because it's curly and pop that there See there, it, that doesn't look overly interesting, but it is still going to tell me what it is, you know, or where I bought it from. So then I can get my washi, and it can be any washi. I'm going to make it longer than my label, and I'm going to run it along the edge and flatten it down. I'm going to use my bone folder to really push it into the paper because what that does is it makes the, the background paper and the vintage lace label show through. Some washi tapes won't show through, like this one here. This color here showed the background label a lot more than this color here did. So you just have to work out which ones show but I can still see that nevertheless. Maybe I should turn it up the other way like that one. Do you fuss like this? Let me know in the comments below if you fuss as much as I do because I just can't help it. It's just part of my nature. And I love washi tape because it allows you to do this. 
So I'm going to turn it up this way and see if that makes a difference. And I probably should put a bit of glue on it now because it'll probably start rolling up at the ends. I think that looks better that way. Flatten it down again and that blue shows up better and so does the vintage lace. Now this one here, what we could do, I've got some paper lace. So this would make a nice label on this one as well. I'm just going to use this center one here because it is a bit narrow. So I'll cut a piece of that off. This is just lace border. And this was also, yes, in my mum's stash. Honestly, my mum had everything you could possibly think of. And there's just tons of it, tons and tons of it. Not just one of each, multiples. So I'm going to put that down a little lower. And it's a sticker. What I'll also do when I actually do put the lace itself on here, it's going to look great as well. So I like it down a little bit rather than right up high. I'm not going to put it at the bottom because when I store this away, you're not going to see the bottom so much. I'm going to turn it over to press it down because I don't want to damage that paper lace. And then I'm just going to cut that. Who'd have thought we'd fuss so much over a lace spool? But anyway, there we have it. We have some blues going on there. And I think they look pretty cool. This one here, do you remember when I made the double-sided sticky tape? I'll get that and show you. Remember this? I made this not so long ago, a video or two ago, and this was the graph paper. I, so I got the graph paper and I put it on the double-sided tape and made my own sticky tape. I made lots of different ones, but then I thought, oh, this would be perfect on here. So I got the Distress Ink out again and just colored up the edges, cut off a piece I want, and now, I can just label this whatever I want and say I bought it from Facebook Marketplace or, or you know, like it was from, you know, Jennifer gave it to me or something like that. I could write that on there as to where I got it from. Say Victorian and it might be 1929. So you can use your own homemade sticky tape using the graph paper and put that on the top of each label as well. Double-sided sticky tape. Check that video and use that on here too. This is just the little bit of tape that I removed off the back of this lace border. I'm just going to use it as a stencil. And what that will do is create a little border at the bottom of these plain scrapbook paper ones. Vintage photo, my makeup brush. I'll just pop that along the bottom. I'm raising it up a little bit from the edge. Get some ink on my brush. Just a hit and a miss, it doesn't have to be perfect. There's not a lot of ink left in this little pad. I'm being careful not to go above this little paper stencil. Just going halfway up the stencil and all the way down to the bottom edge of the card. Just gives a bit more variation. You don't see the bottom of the cards that much, but if you're giving them as a gift in Happy Mail, that's a nice presentation. I made a smaller one, and this smaller one, I just straight out put the washi tape top and bottom just to give it a little bit more decoration. This one would be a nice one to send in Happy Mail this size, 
All I'd done to make this was use this again, cut it out twice, glued the two pieces together and I traced around there and then I shimmied it across and made it smaller by just retracing it out there using the pattern to pull it across. Okay, so you can make them smaller if you want, but you just have to hand do those ones. Stick around for the slideshow oh, on Donna. Thanks for watching so and bye for now. We do this every day And I'm still so amazed by you So hold me tight Yeah.